cardiac arrest, the causes and treatment. Every life is important. Allah says in the Quran, and if anyone saved the life, it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. How common is sudden cardiac arrest? And what can you do to help someone? Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death amongst adults over the age of 40 in the United States and other countries. According to the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, between 250,000 and 450,000 Americans have sudden cardiac arrest each year. Almost 95% of all these people will die within minutes. What causes cardiac arrest? Cardiac arrest is the abrupt halt in the pumping action of the heart. When the heart stops pumping blood, blood flows and spontaneous breathing, respiration also stops, resulting in cardiopulmonary arrest and complete lack of oxygen delivery to vital organs. Individuals lose consciousness immediately. Cardiac arrest is different from myocardial infarction or heart attack, but may be caused by a heart attack. When the blood flows to the heart, it's stopped due to narrow or obstructed coronary arteries. A heart attack occurs. This may lead to a cardiogenic shock and cardiac arrest. Here is why you need to act fast. The brain has higher energy needs than any other organ, so it is the first to lose function and suffer irreversible injury. When a person goes into cardiac arrest and blood stops circulating, different regions of the brain have varying levels of susceptibility, beginning with one of the most fragile, the hippocampus. Here's what happens to the body at normal temperatures before permanent damage to the organs occurs, starting with the brain between four to five minutes. Number one, short-term memory. The memory consolidating hippocampus is the first to fail. A person who regains consciousness will find it hard to remember just what happened. Number two, cognitive function. Next, when the cerebral cortex, which controls executive and cognitive functions is damaged, language and decision-making skills are lost. Three, motor function. As the forebrain's basal ganglia loses blood supply, movements of the limbs, eyes, and other parts of the body can no longer be controlled. Number four, senses. When an organ depleted thalamus can no longer send information to the cerebral cortex, the senses of sight, hearing, and touch start to fail. Finally, five, respiratory system. As the brain stem which regulates our respiratory and cardiovascular system dies, breathing and swallowing stops. The next organs to suffer is the heart and kidneys, followed by the liver and then finally the lungs. It is possible to survive and recover from a cardiac arrest if you get the right treatment quickly. The VF, ventricular fibrillation, can sometimes be corrected by giving an electric shock through the chest wall by using a device called a defibrillator. This can be done in an ambulance or at the hospital, or it can be done by a member of the public at the scene of a cardiac arrest if there is a community defibrillator available nearby. What can we do? The more time that passes, the less likely it is that the person can be revived. And if revived, the more likely it is that the brain damage will have occurred. Brain damage is likely if cardiac arrest lasts more than five minutes, and death is likely if cardiac arrest lasts more than 10 minutes. Thus, first cardiac arrest should be proceeded as quickly as possible. In case of cardiac arrest, a CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, is best started within two minutes. Many times, untrained bystanders do not know what to do, or they think you can get sued if you perform CPR on somebody if you are untrained. But this only applies in instances of misconduct or gross negligence, not in the case of Good Samaritan. Also till date, no one who acted as a Good Samaritan has been sued in the UK. According to the American Heart Association and the British Heart Foundation, even if you are untrained, you can still provide simple hands-only CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So if no trained person is around, then an untrained person can do the following hands-only CPR. Before starting CPR, check is the person conscious or unconscious. If the person appears unconscious, tap or shake his or her shoulder and ask loudly, are you okay? If the person doesn't respond and two people are available, one should call the emergency services and one should begin CPR. If you are alone and have immediate access to a telephone, call the emergency services before beginning CPR. Unless you think the person has become unresponsive because of suffocation such as from drowning, in this special case, begin CPR for one minute and then call the emergency services number. Compressions restore blood circulation. Number one, put the person on his or her back on a firm surface. Two, kneel down to the person's neck and shoulders. Number three, place the heels of one hand over the center of the person's chest between the nipples. 
Place your other hand on top of the first hand. Keep your elbow straight and position your shoulders directly above your hands. Four, use your upper body weight, not just your arms, as you push straight down the chest at least two inches, approximately five centimeters. Push hard at a rate of about 100 compressions a minute. If you haven't been trained in CPR, continue chest compressions until there are signs of movement or until emergency services arrive and take over. If you've been trained in CPR, go on to check the airways and rescue breathing. So remember, the next time you see someone who has suddenly collapsed and is not breathing normally and is really responsive, they are in cardiac arrest. If you witness a cardiac arrest, you can increase the person's chances of survival by phoning the emergency services immediately and giving CPR. Please don't forget to like us and share us on the Digital Mimba Facebook and Twitter. Please also subscribe to the Digital Mimba YouTube channel in the links below.